tutorial will be the first of a few tutorials where we're going over how to break down the setup in, of an automatic stud wall family. So the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to be taking studs and tracks, custom made structural families, and we're going to be nesting these inside of a curtain wall panel family that we're then going to be attaching to a curtain wall system. And there's a few reasons why we're going to do this and I'm going to get into that into detail. As an example, for those of you that aren't familiar with curtain wall systems, um, the way that it works is you essentially take a curtain wall and you you know you add you add grids you know and then each one of these little panels in here is what we're going to be replacing. The only real difference is, is we're going to be trying to not use as many grids as possible. Now the way that this family is going to work is it's actually going to be advantageous to use grids in certain circumstances like creating doors and windows. Uh, but the main idea is you know you want to be able to just draw and then throw your, your stud wall inside of it. So this tutorial uh, is specifically going to be going over just the basic methodology which we kind of just went over and our initial setup of this family. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to new and then we're going to go to family. And like I had mentioned previously, we're going to open a curtain wall panel family template. So this is what you get when you first opened it. Uh, if you want to look at the exterior side here, we can get a better idea of what exactly is being referenced. So if you can kind of understand the way that it works when I was explaining the grids is this would be referencing the edges of the grids, this outside form. So if you stretch it out, if you stretch it up, when you replace that panel with this stud wall panel, it's going to find these references and it's going to place your studs in that location. So just a little bit of background on how that works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load our stud and track families in. Now if you haven't done this, if you don't have these, uh, you can you can look at my older videos in which I create these from scratch and I explain them in every detail so that way they react properly in this family. Or you can go to my Gumroad, uh, which the link is in the description, uh, and you can buy these for like a dollar or two dollars and helps support my channel. Um, so the, what we're going to do is we're going to load these into our family here. Steel track, sorry, wrong one, family two. And then we're just going to hit escape, and then we're going to do the same thing for the steel track family. We're going to load that in. Okay. <coughs> um, so the first thing we want to do is we, and I like to do it this way, is I'm going to place my track family first. So when you're nesting families. Um, the way that this kind of works is it's now a component. It's no longer any of these you know, generic modeling tools. So you can take your component. We're going to do place on work plane because this is something that we went over in detail in those previous videos. Uh, we're going to place on the reference level, so the bottom. And then we're just going to click that in. And then we're going to use our alignment constraints to lock this guy in right on the center so it never gets lost. Now we're also going to take these drag tools, we're going to drag them to the reference points and we're going to lock these in again. This is pretty important dragging these because we want to be sending reference plane information to a reference plane information and the reason why that is is because it's much easier to control geometry with reference planes versus having to control you know geometry inside of another family with a reference plane sometimes rabbit gets confused with that 
and it's it's always best to avoid that so just as a little note to remember that whenever you're creating families like this so we're going to go to the sorry we're going to go back to the reference plane reference level i'm going to go to create component again steel track place on work plane and then we're going to instead of placing on the reference level we're going to place it on the top reference don't worry about this error it's just telling you you can't see it in this view so we're going to lock that like we did with this one we're going to align the center and then we're going to go to the exterior view again and we're going to take these handles we're going to drag them to the reference planes we're going to lock them now this is where i like to do a little bit of testing i like to do it Flex the, flex the model a little bit, make sure that we're not getting any errors or constrainment errors, and it looks like everything's fine. So we can go to the next step, which is we're gonna to go to the reference plane, reference level, sorry. We're gonna to go to create again, and we're gonna do the same thing with our studs. So we're gonna take, uh, go work plane, and then we're gonna find our six inch stud. And then we're going to place that. Make sure that it's it's referencing the lower level. And then we're going to hit spacebar twice to rotate it. And then we're going to place it on both sides. We're going to do the same thing with these as well. We're going to align these to our centers of the studs. And then we're going to also align the outside with the outside of the stud. We're going to lock it. And then just as a test, we're going to see how it looks if we use the fine detail. So look, you can see that our fine detailing went through, so that's good. We're going to leave it at medium for now. And then we're going to go to 3D and take a look at our stud wall and see how it looks. Let's give it some color. Looks pretty good so far. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to go to our exterior view here and we want to just stretch this up. Now you can see that the length of this stud is not being picked up by this reference plane height. So there's two ways you can get around this. Now you can do the same thing that you did with the other one is you can stretch it to the reference plane and you can just lock it in. Now in this situation I don't like to do that because for some reason with this family it gets confused and when you try and um, do the array and you have just a regular constraint like this to a reference plane, for some reason it arrays them diagonally. And I don't know why it does that, because it doesn't do it every time. Now the one way that you can get around this completely is you can use a reporting parameter and associative parameters to send the value of the distance from here to here to the stud so it never forgets it. So the way that I like to do that is I like to, you just take an alignment here, or aligned dimension. You select the dimension. You go to here, create parameter. You just name it, so we'll name it uh, panel height. And then we'll name it, give it an instance. And then we'll check this box saying rep reporting parameter. So like it says here, um, it's saying it can be used to extract a value. Now, realistically, that's what it does. It extracts a value. So basically what you're saying is we're extracting this distance, no matter what it is, and we're sending it to this. Now, on the reverse side, that means that you can't send anything to this. You can't create a dimension or um, uh, a driven parameter through here. So the big advantage to this is we don't want to do that. We want this reference plane to find wherever that grid ends at the top, and we want it to send that distance of that grid to the stud. So the way we do that is we select the stud. We go to the length instance parameter here. We select the associative box here, and that'll open up a dialog for associative family parameters. And this is how you can link nested families 
uh, nested family parameters into your new family, which gives you a lot of control as to how to make these families work like really well. Um, there's sometimes I've had families where you can have like four different nested families inside of each other and they, they're all super simple to use at that point. So I always highly suggest doing whatever modeling separately and then trying to bring it in because it reduces the amount of parameters you need in your family. It makes it much easier to use. So um, we're going to select panel height, which is our report parameter here. Hit OK, and it'll send that. Now you see it, it doesn't need a locking reference anymore. It just puts a little dot saying this is we're referencing to here. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to hit panel height, I'm going to hit OK, and it's the same thing. Now we can you know flex it like we did the other one, make sure it all works. Drag that down, you see it still sends that. Uh, and that's that's basically the end of this video. Um, in the next video, what we're gonna kinda gonna cover is more of the how to get the uh, first stud parameter in and how we're going to do the array properly. So I'll see you guys in the next video.